For more on the state of space exploration programs around the world, we are joined once again by Asif Siddiqui. He's a professor of history at Fordham University and specializes in the history of science and technology. Welcome back. Thank you for having me. Growing up, at least people my age, there were two space programs mm -hmm. that we knew of. It was the United States and it was Russia involved right. in the space race. That's changed, though. Oh, it's changed enormously. There are a whole host of players now uh, in, the, in the space program business, starting with uh, the European Space Agency, Japan, China, India, and uh, they're all playing for the big stakes at this point, and they have pretty sophisticated, mature programs now. Uh, uh, Europe, uh, Japan, um, for example, and Russia, of course, another major player, are involved in the International Space Station, for example, a huge uh, $100 billion project to build a giant space station. So all these players are you know, very much invested in the idea of space exploration right now. Beyond the International Space Station, when we talk about, say, Japan and China mm -hmm. and India, mm -hmm. What are their goals in space? Where do they want to go? When do they want to go there? Right. Well, uh, they're all kind of interesting cases. Uh, China, for example, the country we largely pay attention to right now, has a very sophisticated space program. They've now sent probes to the moon, as have China, Japan and India. So there's some sort of an Asian kind of presence now in deep space exploration. And China, of course, is the third nation after America and Russia to have a manned space program. So they're really playing the big leagues now. Uh, Japan and India also have lunar space exploration plans. India has recently announced that they're going to have a manned program too. So, uh, and Japan is considering it. Europe also is considering it. So they're really pushing into frontiers that were only the provenance of the United States and Russia. How serious do you think China is to putting a person on the moon? Well, that's a good question. I mean, uh, analysts debate this very seriously because the Chinese have been sort of uh, ambiguous about this. But they do have plans to send robots to the moon little rovers and things like that. And they've talked about having humans on the moon, certainly by the 2020s. So we can expect, perhaps, realistically, a, a Chinese on the moon maybe in about 15 years. And the joke is, of course, that once uh, the Americans get to the moon, we'll have to eat Chinese food, because the Chinese will always already be there. So. Well, the Americans would be returning, but the Chinese, this is going to be their first adventure. Of course, right? yeah, yeah. And beyond this, say the moon, yeah. what's the other frontier that we look to? Well, uh, Mars is uh, the obvious target here, and uh, when President Bush announced a plan to return to the moon uh, in 2004, and he said we're going to return to the moon by 2020, uh, the ultimate goal was get to the moon and then get to Mars. And so there are lots of plans, lots of dreams to go to Mars. Uh, America and NASA has a particularly vigorous robotic exploration program, but there's no concrete date. But ultimately, that is the uh, ultimate goal for manned spaceflight, Mars. Asif Siddiqui, Thank good you. to talk with you again. Thank you. Thank you.